Hi everyone! If you're watching this video, you're interested in Aviva Teamwork, probably because you've seen how it can facilitate collaboration across your entire enterprise. But besides just enabling communication and storing documents, Aviva Teamwork can house videos, pictures, fillable forms, production settings, it can enable you to turn collaboration into troubleshoots, and it can let you create and manage training. But perhaps your company already uses Microsoft Teams. I'm Liz Spencer, and today I'm going to show you how you can connect Aviva Teamwork with Microsoft Teams using Power Automate. So let's get going. The first thing you do is you open Power Automate, and you're going to create a new flow. We want an automated cloud flow, so we'll pick that and give it a name. We now need to create our connection, so we'll type in POCA to the search bar. When we select POCA, we're going to create this connection one time. First, we need to give it a name. Next, we need to point to the Teamwork instance. And we do that by selecting the first part of the Teamwork URL. And lastly, we need to create the secure connection here by putting in the API key that we get from the Teamwork instance. And we, do, we get the API key by going to the administration section, into the API section, and then into the API key area. You just need to create this key one time. And when you do create it, you need to make sure you save it to a safe place as you cannot reopen it in Teamwork. We'll copy that API key and put it into our connection. We save that and we are done. Now we're going to add the POCA trigger. So after picking our language, we're going to pick an item or what piece of Teamwork we want to have triggered from. So you can see pretty much every area of Teamwork has a selection here. We're going to go ahead and pick the call for help. And then we pick which part of the call for help we're going to trigger on. So you can see there's whether you create one, whether it's updated or deleted. So we're going to say when a new call help for help is created, we want the trigger to occur. Now we're going to tell it what to do once that trigger happens. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the information from Teamwork to see if it fits our use case. And the cool part of this is that once we've selected an item in Teamwork, we have all the parameters about that item available to us now in the condition section. So th this list will vary depending on what trigger type we've picked. We can pick the information that we're interested in. So I can see, for example, if this call for help is of a certain type or a certain priority, we can put that all here in the condition. So I'm going to pick the type 5, which I know is a maintenance type of call for help, and priority of 1, which is critical. So if that occurs in the new call for help, then we can have something happen. So we can say if it's true, then something, or if it's not false, it's something. So if it's false, I'm going to send an email to myself, really, at this point, to say, hey, it didn't, it didn't work, or this is, you know, there's something wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that mail action in there. I'm going to put my own email address in a subject. And then within the body, or really the subject, we can go and get those parameters again, the context from our call for help, and put that information into this email. So here we can say who, you know, who created the call for help, or the information about what was in the call for help, or anything we want to be part of our email. So we're going to say that the call for help was generated by, and put that person's name in. And then we'll also put what the content was of that call for help into the body of the email. And again, this email is only going to be sent if the condition is not met. Now we want to configure the yes part. So if those two, if the call for help is of type 5 and priority 1, then what do we want to do? This is where we're going to connect it to Microsoft Teams. And inside the Microsoft Teams connector, you see there's lots of different actions and things that we can trigger. 
So we're going to go ahead and make a post if those conditions are met. And just like the email, you know, we just fill out the form here. So we can pick um, which team and which channel the post is going to go into. And you can see it connected to my Microsoft Teams account, and it already knows what I have in there. I just picked from the list. And then I can compose the message. And this is going to be what is actually posted to the channel in Teams. And again, just like the email, I can go and get information from the Teamwork call for help and put that into my post. So we're going to add a little bit more than we did in the email here. We're going to do the poster's name, first and last name, um, as well as the date. And the status. And then also we'll put the content as well. All right, and that takes care of that. So we can just save our flow now and go ahead and test it and see if it works. So to test it, what we need to do is go to Teamwork and make a call for help. So we're back over in Teamwork, and we'll go to our, our Kanban dashboard. You can see Samuel is logged in at the top right there. So Samuel's going to go ahead and click plus, and he's going to go ahead and pick a maintenance type of problem and it's in the critical or priority number one. So those will fit our criteria that we put in our Power Automate flow. So then the message is going to be typed in. You could still add documentation or pictures or whatever it is that you want to. And then he's going to go ahead and tag the equipment down at the bottom of the call for help. So you can see really the, the user doesn't know anything different. They're just going to do their normal um, workflow. So the call for help went in. And there it is, listed as open. If I go back to Power Automate, it's, you can see that it says it ran successfully, and then we can kind of follow along with what actually happened. So you can see the little green check marks and show you the path that the flow took. It went to the yes path, and you can see there is the details of the post that it should have made to our Microsoft Teams. So we'll bring up Teams, and you can see I'm in that same channel, and there's our post. It shows the new call for help, everything we typed in with all the information from Teamwork. Thanks for watching, everyone.